Got a right. Good evening, everyone. We really are appreciative of you tuning into our second installment of Crowley ISD's Money Talks Financial Literacy Series. We have a very special guest today. We have Miss Shante Nicole, you know, through her nonprofit organization, Financial Common Sense, Shante Nicole facilitates workshops, online courses, and personalized financial and credit coaching. She's also the founder of Kids Making Sense a financial literacy program that offers educational products and workshops in the community. The beautiful thing about what she is going to present tonight is that she really is focusing on how to teach parents, how to teach their children to be financially literate and financially secure. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Ms. Shante Nicole. Ms. Nicole, how are you? Ms. Nicole, I think you're still on mute. I am, and I'm trying to get my, okay, hello, <laughs> good afternoon, good evening, I don't know what time it is, but good hello evening. everybody, I am so happy to be here. Um, this topic is so near and dear to me um, because my audience is, are adults, so probably between 20 to 50, 20 to 60 years old, but I started to realize that um, we had to touch the kids first because most adults were in the position they were in because they never learned these things. And so a lot of kids aren't learning because the parents don't even know how to start the conversation or there are things that they don't understand themselves. So I am really, really grateful to be here. I've done several podcast interviews about this specific topic. So I have some really um, awesome ideas and suggestions, some things you might side eye me, that's okay. <laughs> we can talk afterwards, but um, we're really gonna hone in on how to start that conversation with things you should be teaching them now, um, with things you should be teaching, you know, at adolescent, at teenage years and young adults. So I'm very, very pleased to be here. So thank you again for inviting me. Awesome. Hey, we're excited to have you. So before you actually get into the presentation, would you like to give a little more background information about your, you know, what you do and what you have done in the past? Absolutely. I'm trying to wrap this thing up because, you know, you know me, uh, there's a lot that have gone on with me, but the reason why I really started, um, wanting to really learn about finance is because at 22, I was diagnosed with stage three cancer and uh, going through chemo and radiation. I had tons of medical bills and collections. And once I got those medical bills, they said, this is going to be on your credit report. And I was like, you're what? <laughs> and they were like, yep, this is going to be on there and you need to check it out. So I figured out where to find my credit report. I had never heard of a credit report in my life. Looked on there. I saw every mistake I made from 19 credit cards I didn't pay, car notes I'm late on. And I was like, wow, somebody's keeping track of all this stuff. Like, I had no idea. Then it asked me if I wanted to pay $8 for a score. And I was like, there's a score too? Like, <laughs> where's all this stuff coming from? So I did that. And I was like, no, 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 I got to fix this thing. So I just started learning about it, learning about it, learning about it. My degree is not in finance. It's in nursing. That's another story. But I know I'm an expert at this because of the, the experience that I've gone through and just like researching, staying on top of credit law, getting certified to do this. Um, because I said, wow, I wish that somebody told me how serious it was to make sure you pay your credit card on time or make sure you don't tell the car dealership, you'll get your money when you get it. They gonna get their money regardless. So, um, so now all my friends, I'm trying to teach my friends at 22, all the things I learned, they didn't care. Now they're texting me and calling me, asking me all types of credit questions, investing questions. So, and you know, fast forward, I started my group on Facebook because people aren't talking about it. It's a subject that people are embarrassed about. They don't have the knowledge. They just know it's bad. They're in bad shape and they just figure I'm never going to get out. So I'm going to be stuck here. So I started my Facebook group to teach people all the things I learned over the years and to share my expertise and my knowledge. And it grew from, you know, 600 members the first month to 103,000 members today. And um, that is where I do a lot of my teaching and people get information, but then people are overwhelmed. And so then they reach out to me for personal help. So all of those things happen. They had to happen to bring me to this point. And so I'm very grateful for what I've gone through. I will never do it again. I love y'all, but, uh, but, no. but I'm just happy to be here because I, I took those, that, those trials and turned it into something magnificent. So again, thank you guys so much. Well, Hey, that's great information. And, you know, we have, hundreds and hundreds of seniors will be walking across the stage in a few months and we want to equip them with as much knowledge as possible to, so they'll be successful once they graduate and moving forward and I see so much negative information about credit and, and false information that could definitely get people locked up on, on the internet so I definitely want yeah. you to clear that kind of stuff up with people and let them know what 
is allowed and what's not. So you can go ahead and get started with your presentation. I think people awesome. are ready. Thank you so much. Yep. Uh -huh. Let me share my screen. Um, make sure I have the right. I'll just share the whole screen. I see it. You see this? Oh, yes, this is it. So um, so if you guys have any questions in the chat, please feel free to answer them. Uh, I'm, this is, I'm going to fly through it because it's not a lot of uh, difficult knowledge, things to understand. It's just things that you may have never thought of. So if there's time to um, continue, I will kind of tap in because I know a lot of parents are like, look, I know we're talking about these kids, but I have some issues too. So I'll try to cover some of those things. Maybe a lot of the biggest mis common misconceptions and myths about credit and stuff like that without going into my deep credit workshop, you know, for the sake of time. But I call this Kids Making Sense. My program is called Kids Making Sense because, of course, there's a play on my business name, Financial Common Sense, but also that we want kids to make sense of money. Kids see people spend money every day. They see you in the grocery store. Either you're writing a check. I don't know who writes checks anymore, but you're writing a check. You're swiping your debit card. You're swiping your credit card. They asking you to buy them things, and they see people on videos, and they, they balling, and they swiping money, and they just money, 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 and, like, people aren't telling them the best way to um, obtain it, the, the safest way to obtain it, uh, the best way to maximize it, the best way to build on it, to leverage your credit. And so these are just conversations that aren't happening. So uh, I want to just stop that cycle. So again, my name is Shante Nicole. I'm a credit coach, not a credit repair specialist, credit coach. I am a financial educator and a kid's money coach. I have been featured on several different platforms, whether it was a newspaper, um, TV, radio, um, and of course, podcasts uh, for two of my organizations. One is Financial Common Sense, FCC. My other one has nothing to do with finance, but it is called FACE, and it's called Facing Autism with Children Everywhere. I have a child with autism, so that uh, though that population is near and dear to my heart as well. Back in June of 2021, CNBC reached out and was like, we, we want to talk to you about your debt management, I mean, your debt payoff story. And so they wrote this. And if you Google my name and just type CNBC, you'll find the link. Or if you want me to send it to you directly, you can email me. But they talked about after going through cancer and unemployment and divorce, how I was able to pay off more than $50,000 in credit card debt. It took me a very long time, but it is paid off. Um, and that's kind of just shared a little bit more about what you guys heard, um, but it's in more detail. So again, this is an old slide. I don't know how that got here, but we have 103,000 mem members right now. Um, this was about two months ago. So um, if you're on Facebook, please come and join Financial Common Sense. It is an amazing group with people who are just um, supportive, encouraging. And if you are judging, you are out. I have 13,000 members on my block, well, ex-members on my block list. So I, I'm very, very um, serious when it comes to not making people feel shamed or bad or embarrassed about because everybody has the story. You just heard a little bit of mine. So I'm not embarrassed to share that because I came out of it and I want you guys to do the same if you're in that situation. This, these are a couple of uh, pictures that I've done at elementary schools. That's an elementary school in DC. I live in the DC area. I was actually teaching. I taught five, nine classes K through four about credit, <laughs> about savings, um, debt management, because those kids are not too young to start learning about this. Um, another nonprofit for middle school girls, um, Gold Grinders, another nonprofit for girls that are seeking entre to become entrepreneurs, and that's Gold Grinders again. Uh, high schoolers were learning about um, investing and credit and how to buy a car and how to manage your budget when you need to go grocery shopping. So all of those things. So what's the real issue? And we talked about that already is that you guys didn't learn about money. And the reason why you guys probably didn't learn is because your parents didn't learn about money or all you heard gram grandma say years ago was um, cash only, no credit, no credit, no credit. So then you grow up saying grandma said, grandma said, and then when you apply for something, you get turned down or your interest is really high because you don't have any credit. Um, and then, you know, we have the I live paycheck to paycheck people when they really don't. When I do budget coaching with my um, clients, I have them write down exactly how much they make, exactly how much goes out in monthly expenses. And the, my system tells you exactly how much you have left every month. And they're always blown away because they're like, I always live check to check. I'm like, well, this says you have $350 left every month. So that's where you have to start looking at where is my money going? You know, and so that's we get really deep into this. But you can start teaching your kids. Kids get birthday money, Christmas money, allowance. What are they doing with it? Are they blowing it on candy? Are they blowing it on, you know, PlayStation games? And I'm not, I don't want to say blow it because they can save for those things and they can treat themselves to those things, but then they have nothing left and they got to wait to the next birthday or wait to the next week when the allowance comes, when they can start building and saving. And if you aren't doing that, you know, 
How hypocritical is it of you to teach your kids to do that? Okay, so this is for you and them. So when should you start teaching your kids about money? I get that question all the time. And I say, the first time they ask you to buy them something, I don't care if they are two and a half years old. Mommy, can you buy me this? They understand that when they are in the store, because they kids, are, our kids are very bright. They are observant and they see. When I'm at that register, we put what I wanted on that belt. My mommy handed them something. They handed my mommy back something. We walked out with exactly what I wanted. They know that some type of transaction is happening, but what transaction is that? Look at that precious little girl. I was about four years old in that picture. And you know it's from the 80s because that picture is brown, 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 brown. So I remember asking my mother, I don't know what it was, but I remember asking her at four years old, can you buy me whatever it was? And she said, well, I don't have any money. And I said, well, can't you just write a check? Because all I saw growing up was that we were buying groceries. She broke out some little paper and was writing down and she tore it off and gave it to them with her ID and we walked out with groceries. So she could have used that opportunity to say, well, Shantae, when you write a check, that's not free money. You know, that money is actually in a bank. Let me show you what a bank is. We drive down the street, point to a bank. So mommy's money is in there. And when I write this, they take the money for look, just something, right? In the way that kids can understand. But she just said no, <laughs> you know? And so I had to wait until I grew up and realized what all that meant. But we can start that conversation really early. So I've discovered between my group and doing workshops and speaking engagements that most people don't understand even the simplest way. People join my group and say, guys, help me create a budget. And I'm like, budgeting is simple. How much do you bring in and what's going out and figure out where to allocate your money? But people are just, they don't understand. And we just grew up and start adulting and just try to figure it out. And then once we hit a brick wall, then we're trying to figure out how to learn how to do all these things. But we need to be proactive and not reactive. And for people don't say, well, I'm already grown now. It's too late. It's never too late. If you're still breathing, it's not too late. If you're listening to me, it's not too late. So when I started my group, the sole purpose was for adults. Uh, but then I started realizing you guys are in shambles because <laughs> you didn't learn this stuff. So let me catch these kids while I can. And so um, I'm so grateful to have that, that audience at my disposal as well. Again, I've done several podcasts about this. And it's not that you just don't want to teach your kids about being responsible. You don't know how. How do you start the conversation? How do you sit down and just start talking about money and you can do that but sometimes you need a little bit of guidance so people always say I want my kids to have responsibilities um but they never give them responsibilities yeah you give them chores but like that's not there's no financial um you know transaction involved unless you do give allowance but what other responsibilities do you want them to have we're trying to prepare our children for the future and I'm not trying to sound like Whitney Houston but like we need to really like think about you know our five-year-olds are going to be 17 before you know it. I know a lot of you guys can probably attest to that, or you teach, and you're like, I remember when they were in the kindergarten, now they're in sixth grade. So it's really time to start teaching the kids how to be responsible. And like I said earlier, we didn't start really learning how to be responsible until we had to be. Once we grew up and then bills start flying through, and then they're taking taxes out of our check, and we don't understand who FICA is and what they're trying to do with my money, that's when we started trying to become responsible, and we need to teach our kids now. So. Here are some things that you can start implementing at home. Please ask questions if you like. Um, I will be looking in the chat and so will my lovely host be looking in the chat um, as well. And these are the things you can implement. Like I said, I've done this several times and these parents are like, what? I'm not doing it. These are my kids. And at the end, they're like, you know that thing you said about such as I'm gonna really try that and see. So I wish I could have stayed in touch with them to see if they tried it and how it's working out. But if you do give money for chores, and I'm not saying start if you don't, if you don't have the finances or you're like, that's not our thing. We don't do that around the house. That's fine. Use any type of money that comes in, whether it's consistent or inconsistent basis. And don't call it allowance, call it income, because we want the kids to feel like I'm working for this. I get an income, mommy and daddy get an income or whoever the caregivers are. So you get an income. It's not allowance. Allowance sounds like it's uh, kids are entitled to it. You know, give allowance, allowance. When you hear the word allowance, we never think about you know, even tax allowances. We think about kids, kids get allowances, but call it income. And so what I tell people to do is, you know, actually um, go on Word, you know, or whatever document system you use and create like a little check, you know, and print it out every Friday or every other Friday and say, here's your page, here's your income, your paycheck for your work this week. And that lets the kids say, wow, okay. And so of course you're giving them a paper check, but you know, you have the money to give to them. And whether you give it to them in cash, but whether you give it to them on a debit card that you transfer money to, give them something tangible that they can have, like, this is my paycheck, right? 
And so they make it feel like they're working for it. They're being responsible. I got to take the trash out. Even though you're like, look, whether I'm paying them or not, they're going to do it anyway because I said so. We know that, but we're just trying to instill things that you guys are already doing and implementing ways to start the responsibility train, okay? So it's like, here's your paycheck. Here's your paycheck. Um, you know, that's one way to do it. Make them pay bills. This is another one that either people side at me or they pat me on the back. This teaches them a few things. Delayed gratification. I want a Xbox game. It is $60. But every time I get my income from doing my chores or my work, I blow it on pizza. I blow it on movie theater for the weekend. I treat my, my friends to things. And then they have $2 left or nothing. And then the next allowance week comes and they blow that too. But meanwhile, they still want that PlayStation game. So we need to start teaching them. Listen. When you get your income from however way you want to pay them, all of that money is not yours. You have to pay five cents for water for the month. You have to pay a dollar for your rent. And you have to pay $2.50 for Wi-Fi. Because I know those kids use the Wi-Fi way more than y'all use them. So in the end, maybe their monthly bills are, you know, $4. <laughs> Excuse me. But this teaches them, okay, just because you got $20, you got bills. So now you really only have $16. Oh, man. Okay, well, oh, man, because guess what? That's what we got to do. When mommy and daddy gets a check, we do not get to keep everything in that check. It would be amazing if we could, but we cannot. So not only the leg application, but I got to be mindful of how I spend because I know next month $4 is going to be due, <coughs> excuse me, for my bills. So create that responsibility. Help them understand you cannot blow all of your money. One moment. And while she is getting situated, if you have any questions, please make sure you drop them in the chat. I apologize. I lost my voice hosting an event last night. And so I've been talking all day to clients. And so I've kind of having a little choky moment. So forgive me, but excuse me. So we cannot blow all of our money as adults. They need to learn that just because you get $20 every week, that twenty dollars is not yours to you know to keep or spend or do what you want. Give them their own debit card. I know you guys see commercials. There's so many debit cards out here for children. They will allow you to transfer money directly from your bank account to theirs. You can have it set on auto pay. So, excuse me. Every week you say they get five dollars. You can monitor their spending and everything like that. So that is a really, really um, great way to start the responsibility train. Excuse me. You buy things for them anyway. You go to the store, they say, hey, can I buy this? Make them buy it. Hey, I know that I just gave you $20 and yes, you had to pay $4 rent, but you have $16 left. So how about you buy this? And then make them buy it. You swipe for your transactions, they're going to bag them up, you stand to the side, and then when it's their turn, the cashier is going to swipe it, they're going to pay with their own debit card, let them choose their own little PIN number, Make, give them autonomy, make them feel like they're being grown-ups. You know, when we were little, we could not wait to be grown-ups. Now, I don't know why we were in such a rest to be grown-ups, because I don't like this life, but kids want to feel responsible, they want to feel grown up. So let them get their own debit card. Debit cards did not exist when I was grown up. I don't think the first check card came into play until I was already out of college. Then it was, oh, your check card, instead of having to go to the ATM and get out cash, you can just swipe it right there in the store and it comes straight out your bank out. What? But that got people in trouble. <laughs> so, but let the kids understand, you know, and then log into their the app, you know, and say, hey, this is what your starting balance is. This is what you spent here. You spent here. This is all you have left over. So I know you want this soy, but you only have $12 left and it's $15. So you have to wait till your next paycheck, you know, just like we do. So there are so many ways to invite them into our world. Give them ownership. You don't swipe. Let them swipe. Even if it's you're paying for it. If you know you're going to buy them something, give them the money on their account 
beforehand so that when it's time to come, they can swipe it themselves. Hey, and real quick, before you before you mm -hmm. go on, can I also, speaking of student or child debit cards, I, I did want to give a recommendation. Like here in Texas, we have RBFCU, which is a credit union, and I just opened three cards for my children, three debit cards, and they ha they're free. So you know they have the green light, which I think you have to pay $5 a month. But uh -huh. RBFCU, and I, I think even Chase has a free debit card for the kids as well. So I just want to throw that out there. Awesome. And then also... There's a company called Goal Setter. If you check them out, they have an investing app for kids. The basic app has um, quiz quizzes that the kids can take from K through 12. So things that's relatable to them, things they understand, they can start learning about risk management, debt management, budgeting, credit, but in ways that they understand. Um, they also have a debit card. Um, parents can donate, I mean, not donate, parents or friends or family members um, can send money to their goal setter account directly to them. Um, it's really, really great company. So check that out as well. But this is the one that root parents really side eye me about. So first is the allowance. My kids gonna do this whether I give them money or not. But then you have involved my kids and paying my bills. This is grown folks business. I'm not talking to my kids about what I'm spending my money on or what I gotta do. But guess what? If you don't, kids do not have a sense of reality. They don't understand that. Mommy, can you buy me this? Can you buy me this? Daddy, can you buy me this? Grandma, can you buy this? Well, no, not right now. I don't have it. Ugh, oh my gosh. And they just look at you work. You work every day. You spend all these crazy hours. I know you have money. You bought me this last month. You bought yourself this. We went on this trip. But they don't know that every month you have lots of bills that you have to pay. All they see is things getting taken care of. They wake up, they go to school, they take a shower. They're not realizing you have to pay for that water. They flip their light on so they can see when they get dressed. That's electricity. The place, the roof over your head, we have to pay mortgage or rent. I'm driving you to your soccer practice. Guess what? We need gas. And guess what? I have to pay for this car to even take you. And guess what happens if I don't pay for this car or I don't get gas? We're not driving anywhere. Or they're going to come take my car or the lights are going to be off or you're going to be taking a shower in cold water. So these are things like kids don't know. I didn't know. I had no idea how much my mom was responsible for. And she she held that back until I was an adult. And I'm like, well, if you explain those things to me when I was younger, then I would have really been able to understand. But then you do have some parents who say, well, I don't want my kids to feel like, I don't want to make them feel bad or they don't need to know that I'm struggling, but we have to really start stepping into reality. You don't have to say, mama broke. You know, you don't have to say that, but say, hey, listen, this is how much I get. If you're comfortable saying that, or just give them a figure and say, these are the things I have to pay for. 350 for the car, your soccer you know, AAU team is, you know, $1,200 and then you need equipment and then your little sister needs this. And then, you know, daycare or your sister's in college, just let them know because kids, I'm telling you, I did a workshop with them and it was called, um, we were talking about like, um, just basic, like basic standard expenses, monthly expenses. And we just gave, you know, figures that estimate, you know, so most people pay about $1,400 a month for rent and this how much for their car and this how much for insurance and then medical insurance and then cell phone and TV. And at the end, we showed them like, this is sort of a reality and a snapshot of what your parents or caregivers have to pay monthly. And they were like, oh my gosh, you know, like so blown away because they, you know, $200 to them sounds like a lot of money, but you know, they have to see you pay for so many things. Maybe they'll understand when they ask you for something, you say not right now. They're like, oh yeah, mommy has to pay for this. Or, you know, you want to stay in gymnastics class? Well, mom, which one you want, toys or gymnastics class? So really start involving your kids in what's happening because they don't know anything. They go to school, they come home and everything's afforded to them. The roof over their head, their toys, the TV, they just turn the TV on, they eat your groceries and then they go to school, you drive them to school in your car with your gas and they don't give you anything. So that's why I said, make them start paying bills. You have to pay bills, make them pay bills. Say, I get, you know, I don't know, you get $4,500 every paycheck. Well, that $4,500 is after taxes and you still can't pay, use all of it for what you want, right? So I know that teaching kids the difference between wants and needs sounds like such a simple conversation to have, but it needs to be had because adults need to still be having that conversation with themselves. Do I really need this or do I want it? Because we want things we don't have the money for. And what do we do? We swipe. And that's how we get down the credit card debt train. Um, so we want to start involving our kids in paying bills. Got it. So I had, let me just, before you continue, let me hop hop on uh, Q&A. So somebody said, I don't have a question, but the pay bill sounds like a great idea. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, pay bills. And like, I mean, you can make it as small as you want. 
two cents for, you know, two cents for electric, two cents for water, two cents for gas. Okay, so that's, you know, six cents you got to pay for those utilities, you know, and then even create bills. There's so many templates online. You can just type, you know, bills simply. Keep it simple, you know, and if you want to, for the high schoolers, if you want to get really clever, take out a little bit for taxes. So not only do you have bills, but you also got some taxes coming out. Don't do it for the little kids, though. Let them kids have that money. But, <laughs> you know, you, you just want to really start, you know, y'all remember the Cosby show when he was trying to teach Theo like about living expenses. So he's like, so, you know, here's all you're going to get. How much you're going to pay for rent? Oh, I'm going to live in a nice place. I'm going to be paying about, you know, $25. Rent. Okay, he took the $25. And they say, oh, you need to eat. So you're going to pay this for the groceries. Then he said, so I got such and such money left. He said, are you going to have a girlfriend? Yep, took all the money. Like the reality of you do not get to keep all the money that you're making. We don't, you don't either. So, you know, and then when your kids start actually working outside the home, that's when you, that way it's not a shock to them. When they move out on their own, it's not a shock. It was a shock to me when I moved out in 19, how much stuff I had to pay on my own. The biggest thing, and it wasn't even a bill. Let me tell y'all when reality hit me. When I needed to cut something open, I didn't have a pair of scissors. Now at home, you just go in the little kitchen drawer that got all the junk in there. You get your pair of scissors out and you got to cut what you got. I was on my own and I was like, I don't even have a pair of scissors. Like the reality that I needed to go buy I'm like, where do I even buy scissors? I didn't know as a, as a child, a teenager, scissors were all, always in the house. A broom and dustpan, spill something, spill, crumbs, sweep. I was like, I got to buy all these things that was just there in the home. It was a shock to me. All these bills I had to pay, car note, insurance, all of these things, uh, medical um, insurance, you know, they came right out of my check. I didn't ask for that, but I needed it because we all need insurance. So you want to start the kids as early as possible so that when they are 16, 17, 18, they are not blown away and shocked by the things that they have to be responsible for. When they get that age and they start working, make them pay for their cell phones. If you're on the family plan, divide it by four or however many people are on your plan and make your teenager pay that portion of their cell phone. You want that cell phone to stay on? You want to keep Snapchatting and TikToking? Then pay your bill. And even if you don't make them pay the whole thing, they don't have to know that it's not covering the whole thing, but really start to, to hone in on the reality of living, okay? Once you grow up, it is not, you're not going to stay in this house forever. That's what you're not going to do. So it's all about just making sure that <clears throat> they understand what you bring in does not belong to you fully. Thank you. Hey, that, that's some great information. So I'm going to hit on a few more things that in the chat I have. What was the name of the place you said kids can get a debit card and invest? I think it was Goal Setter. I actually, yep. I'm going to, yes, if you type it in, if you go into Google and type in Goal Setter. G-O-A-L Setter, S-E-T-T-E-R. It's um, a, a woman of color. She started it. Um, she's the CEO. And not that it's only for, you know, for people, the brown and blacks, but that the biggest thing is that we are underprivileged and, un, you know, when it comes to learning these things. And so it is really, really um, a great company. Um, they are backed by the NFL, the NBA, Robert Smith, who's a billionaire, um, uh, lots of actors. Anthony Anderson has done several videos for the, for some high schoolers. Um, it's just a really, really great um, a company. So just take a look at Goal Setter. Um, and then, oh, thank you. Yeah, yes, please implement all of these suggestions. I'm going to be implementing all of them. So <clears throat> even if it's a one or two, don't shock the kids. Don't start just throwing all these things at them. They're like, wait a minute, you know, but start to roll it out. You know, this is what you got to be responsible for. Even if you guys are like, I don't, I'm not financially in a space where I can give my kids allowance on a consistent basis. <clears throat> if you can give them $2 a week, that is allowance. They, it doesn't have to be 10, $15. You know, people can give what their, what their uh, pay, paycheck allows. But I will tell you, please be more um, reasonable when it comes to making decisions on how much you should allocate to something like this, because you can say, I don't have money to give to my kids, but if I ask you to show me how much you spent on eating out in the last month, I'm sure those amounts can be in the hundreds. And I know this because I, I do this all the time with like a lot of my clients. Um, so you can, you can find that money. It's just, you know, you need to be prioritized what's important. I need to start teaching my kids about how to handle money. So if they're six years old, give them $2 every week and end them up to have $8 a six-year-old, $8, that is like, okay, what am I going to do with this? I'm going to go to 7-Eleven or, you know, whatever the, tw the stores are, convenience stores around you guys' way, and just buy all the candy, buy all the junk. And so then they have nothing. And then they say, mommy, can you buy me this? Well, I mean, you had $3 left yesterday. Like, you know, and, and it may hurt. It may just be a piece of candy. It's just a dollar. I can buy it for them. No. Guess what? They got to wait till next check. 
and then they can have that candy. So we really have to, I mean, if we're not being mean and they gonna think we're the meanest people on earth, I don't care. You shouldn't care either. We're setting them up for success because they're not gonna understand now. There's so many things my mother told me, you will understand when you become an adult. And I was like, ah, no, I won't. You're just being mean. And now I'm like, oh my God, I see why you did that. Or I see why you said that. So, you know, even, even budgeting, let's get to, no, I wanna say smart shopping, okay. The kids have the internet at their disposal. The internet, I mean, I, we didn't have no internet. We had the yellow pages. When I wanted to look up a phone number of a business, I had to look in the yellow pages. So I remember I was nine years old. I wanted a pair of K-Swiss. High top K-Swiss, size four. And my mother, so my mother was a single mom. And so she didn't hardly make anything, but I wanted these shoes. And she said, okay, I need you to call around a few stores and find the cheapest price. So I'm looking up the yellow pages. I'm living in DC. I'm on Snyder's. Hi, Snyders. Um, you have a pair of white case with size four. Okay, how much? $65.99. Thank you. Hi, so-and-so foot, uh, foot Locker. How much? And I just called all these stores. And then I found the cheapest one. So I called her back and I said, okay, mom, I found them at such and such for this much. And she said, now, how much did you find them at the other stores? Now, I'm nine. And I told her, she said, now, do you see the importance of shopping around first? Because what if we went to that first place you called? And then you wouldn't have known that the store down the street had it for $10 less. That's the only conversation I had with my mother about money. <laughs> Otherwise, it was, can, I, can you buy me this? No. Can you buy me this? No. But she taught me. So listen, these kids, mommy, can you buy me such and such? Even if you plan to buy it? Sure, I can. I need you to go on your, your iPhone, because I'm sure you got one, or your Android or whatever, and shop around, go on Amazon, go on the store that actually does sell it, go on eBay and see where can I find this for the cheapest price? Make them research. And, and it's, I know I'm a researcher. It was fun for me calling all the places and writing down and getting all the, you know, problem solving and troubleshooting my life at nine years old. And so again, just ways that make them feel like they're involved in every part of your life. Because parents, we do, we go to work, we come home, cook, okay, good night, whatever, drop, drive them to class, do this, do that, we doing whatever we got to do, and happy hour with our girlfriends, and then brunch on Sunday, and then we start the week all over again on Monday, and we just living, we just here and there and everywhere, and we don't really take time to sit down with our kids and let them know what is really going on, all, we're just moving and shaking all day long, all week long, all month, all year long, so we got to slow down a little bit and start having these conversations with our kids, okay, so let's talk about credit, <laughs> I told you, I taught a credit class to kindergartens. They need to understand how this works. Can't you just write a check? The, the millennial version of that is, can't you just use your card? I'm sure, how many of y'all heard that before? Mommy, can you buy me some? Just use your card. They, don't, they just see you swiping and entering numbers and they don't know what is what, okay? So use your card. I just tell my mom to use their card. They don't know what's happening. That card is free money to them. Just like that paper check was free money to me. Um, what, what, let, me let me go to the chat real quick. What's a reasonable income? See, that's where I say it. it's up to you. I don't know how much you make. I don't know what your living expenses are like. So you have to say, okay, reasonably, I know that I make this. I can allocate $50 each month to my kid. So you break that down weekly or if you want to pay them bi-weekly, look, switch it up. You got a new job now. So now you get paid once a month. <laughs> so now you got to wait a longer time to, you know, to get that money back. Or you get paid bi-weekly or you get paid weekly. Whatever it is that you want to do, this, this is your world. Listen, the ball, I'm throwing the ball in y'all's court, okay? I'm over here dribbling. As soon as I got on this call, I was tossing it to Nia. I was tossing it to Tamika. Listen, I'm tossing it to y'all because this is the conversation you guys need to start having. Okay, this is the conversation I'm teaching people to start having. You can open that door. So you come up with what you want to pay. Can I, I can I ask you a question? Nope. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to do like a general, just a general rule for how much we can pay income to our children, could we say their age times two each month? So if you're 15, $30 a month that you can earn just outside of a regular job. I mean, that's a suggestion, you know, or you can come up with your own, you know, uh, you can relate it to, you know, when they, when they, instead of a report card, cause you know, it's like you get those every quarter, you can say every time you bring in, you know, an A or B on a test, every time you take a final, every time you, you know, whatever, I don't know if you, if your kids are bad and I'm not, I'm sorry, you know, we got, we, we can say when our kids are bad every month, if I don't get a call from your teacher or get an email that something happened, you get, you know, what make up whatever rule you want. If it's not allowance, if you say, I don't want to, I don't want to relate money to chores they need to be doing anyway because they live here then you can relate it to whatever you want you know i don't know every time you if they're involved in church every time or you want you're trying to get them more involved in church you know if you join this ministry and you stay on there for at least the first half of the year then we can do this oh if i see you being more responsible with or if i if i see you doing your chores and i didn't have to tell you to do them 
you get a bonus for that. You know, make it interesting. Make it fun. Think about all the jobs you've had. Think about the job you have now. How are your monetary benefits given to you? How often do you get raises? What are the raises for? Because you went above and beyond or do you just get raises every quarter or every fiscal year? So you decide how you want to play the game of Monopoly in your home, okay? Yeah, before you move on, uh, this attendee said it made their son do extra chores when he ran low on money. I so love that. Cool. Listen, <laughs> you, want some, you want some extra credit? You want some commission? I need you to do some more. So I love that so much. I love it. I love it. So let's talk about credit because this is the, this is kids need to, I'm telling you if, yes, budgeting is important, but the reason why people are in credit trouble is because they don't budget. So when I do a lot of my credit workshops, people want me to get right to the credit, credit, credit. I'm like, let's talk about first how you're handling your money. Let's talk about your money mindset. Why do you handle money the way you do? You overspend because you grew up and didn't have. So you say, huh, as soon as I grow up and give me a job, I'm going to spend how I want because when I was growing up, I, I didn't have. Or Christmas comes around and you blow all your money on Christmas gifts for your children and your nieces and your nephews. And you don't take one year to say, you know what, we're going to sacrifice Christmas this year. We're going to do, we're going to go, we're going to do a little camp, a little um, indoor campfire around the house. We're going to do tents and set them up and we're going to make you know, have picnic baskets and do something fun because that's what we're going to do because mommy is trying to get this house. I know you guys want your own room. I know you want a big backyard. So we're going to skip Christmas this year. I know people say, well, I don't want that. My kids, they're going to, and then they're going to go to school and their friends are going to say they got this and they got that. And so, okay, I understand we do everything for our kids, but at some point, where does the sacrifice come in? The sacrifice only can't be on your side of the uh, planet. It has to be on theirs too. Because guess what? Christmas comes at the same time every year. People are shocked and not prepared when Christmas comes. The date does not change. The date for Thanksgiving changes, even though it's the fourth Thursday of every month. Christmas is the same every year. Why do we let it sneak up on us? I have clients today. We are in February 2023. They use credit cards for Christmas 2022. I mean, 2021. And when Christmas 2022 came, they were still trying to pay off Christmas 2021. Meanwhile, those toys broke. The, the kids aren't interested in those toys anymore. The clothes don't fit anymore. You don't fit those clothes no more because maybe you gained weight, you lost weight. Whatever the case is, we need to stop using credit cards for things we don't have the money for already. So guess what? It's 12, Christmas is at the end of the year. So every time you get paid, and this is for you parents. I know we, this is for the kids, but I'm talking to you guys right now. Get a $25 gift card, a $50 gift card, and put it away in the top drawer. And every time you get paid, get a $50 gift card. And you know how much money you have by the time it's time to shop for Christmas. So that way you're not charging things. You're not borrowing money from the bank to buy gifts for your family and friends. That sounds very silly. We don't look at credit cards as a loan. We have to really start looking at that. I know it's a plastic card. We just swipe and go about our business, but it's a loan. So if you're ever wondering, is this a really silly purchase? Do I really have, should I be prioritizing this purchase? No matter what you're about to buy, if it's not cash, I want you to ask yourself, would I walk into a bank today and ask them for a loan for this item? Like, how important is that? That I stop, I go inside the bank, I sit and wait for a, tell, a, a person to come, take me into their little office, ask me how I'm doing, what am I doing there? I say, I need to take out a personal loan. Oh, well, you know, what is this for? Is it for like some, you know, is it get your, you know, home renovated? Is it for, you know, to get your roof taken care of? Oh, no, I just, Victoria had a secret, has a secret on some bras and I, I can't pass it up. You can't, you, we can't do that. Unless you have the money for it, we should not be swiping because I would not walk into the store, a bank and ask them for a loan so I can go shop for Victoria's Secret semi-annual sale or Dix is having a sale on fishing rods. Okay. All right. Well, guess what? Wait for the next sale. Because have you ever walked in a store that had a sale and they never had another sale again? No, there are sales going on every day. So we have to be patient. We have to be disciplined, show self-control. So can you just use your card? Nope, I can. But let me tell you what happens when I use that card. This money is in the bank. Every time I get paid, that money goes in the bank. But first, I got to pay for this, that, this, that, this, that. And this is how much I normally have left. But do I want to have zero dollars until the next time I get paid? No. So you know what? Maybe I can't buy it this time, but maybe by my next check, I can because I have less bills. Whatever you are comfortable sharing with your kids at whatever age, we need to start inviting them into our reality. I'm going to say that a million times. Them versus us. What does that mean? If you have, again, you have a check. You cannot blow all your money when you get it. So you have allowance and you cannot blow all your money when you get it. I have bills, you have bills. Again, make their bills very minimal, but make it hurt enough where they can see. 
I had 20 and now all four whole dollars are gone. Yep. Because mommy gets 4,500 and 4,000 of my dollars are gone every month. So I'm just left with $500. So really, 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 really tap into that. Um, college kids grabbers. I'm not talking about kidnappers. Okay. I'm talking about those kids walking on campus and they're like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Would you like a free shirt? Would you like a free mug? Come over here and apply for a credit card. Okay. Kid, college kids should not have credit cards unless they have absolutely understand what they're used for, the benefits of them, the pros and cons. If you pay, what can happen? If you don't pay, what can happen? Because nobody are teaching these kids. Kids are like, oh, I can swipe. I can get all, all the things I want while I'm on campus, off campus, whatever. And then that bill comes and they're like, oh, I was supposed to pay this back <laughs> now. Um, and then they don't have it. Then they're late payments, late payments, collections. Now they, they graduate college with collections already. That should not be happening. So we want to start teaching them before they get to college so that when they get there and they get those cards, they're like, oh yeah, I'm good. I'm, I already know how to use these. My mom taught me. She put me on her account as an authorized user. So I see, you see, I'm sorry. You see AU right here, AUs, that means authorized users. You can add your child to a credit card that you have that has longevity, that has great usage, that has great payment history. And that information is going to go on their credit report once they turn of age. So you can already start to establish good credit um, for your kids, but a lot of parents stop there. I add them as authorized users and they have 700 scores by the time they graduate, but they still don't know anything about credit. All you did was let them piggyback off you and give them a high score, but tell them, okay, these are the things you have to do to keep the score. These are the things you have to do to maintain it. This would have, if you don't do these, if you do these things, your score can drop. And if it drops, these are the things that can happen. But if you do these things, your scores will stay high. They will increase. And these are the benefits that you get to take it take advantage of when you have high credit scores. So don't just add them as authorized users and stop there. Teach them what that even means. Most people don't even know what that means. They come in my group. If I add somebody's authorized user, will their bad credit mess up my credit? And I'm like, that means you have no idea what an authorized user is. So you guys have to do your own due diligence and research to make sure that you're learning this thing so that you can pass it on to your children. But these are just ways that you can start um, building, instilling these uh, values in them, these mantras, you know, don't use credit cards if you don't understand it. Don't get one if you have no idea how to use it. Don't use it if you don't have the money to pay already. Um, you know, no, I can't just use my card because I have to have money to cover when I swipe. You know, all of those things, all of those um, suggestions I said about making them pay bills, call it an, an income, actually handing them a paycheck and make them cash it at the bank of mommy and daddy. And when they hand you the paycheck and their little school ID or whatever little cute little ID there, then you hand them money. That's exactly what we used to have to do. They had to go and they make them sign it on the back, get their little cursive signature. Are they teaching cursive still these days? I don't know. But make them sign their little signature and then, you know, make it re real. I know I loved playing real life when I was younger. I used to love playing grocery store. You know, I used to go in the store, they give you those little plastic eggs and plastic little orange juices and little boxes of fake boxes of cornbread. And I'm pushing my little cart through the living room, acting like I'm grocery shop and swiping and paying the cashier. I just love feeling like I was being an adult. Most of these kids think they're adults, but they're going to get the reality when they become adults for real. But we want to really start setting them up for success. And so starting these conversations is the way to do that. So Kids Making Sense is my program. That's my little cartoon version of me. <clears throat> and I have two planners. I have planners for uh, more of the elementary, uh, elementary middle um, school kids and then the red one are for more middle school teenage kids it all depends on the maturity level of your child but these are financial planners and activity books they have word finds activities bingo games um savings charts little saving challenges for the kids to start saving money and stuff all those things to really help guide them on things they should know and what to do but also help guide you on how to start teaching them and having those conversations about money. There's a, a thing in there that said, if you have this much money, what would you do with it? So it's all these different choices. I would buy the clothes, I would go to the movies, I would buy this and it's just like, okay, well, then how much will you have at the end of the week after you spend all that? And it's like, okay, well, how much can you put in savings? Did you put any in savings? Why not? Why did you spend all of it? So just really having it, make asking, don't say they're right or wrong. Tell me the decision, the decision making process behind why you spent all your money on all these things. And what would you do if you needed something else or wanted something else, but you spent all your money? So that is just really, really ways to start having that conversation. Then I have flashcards. The flashcards, physical flashcards are completely sold out, but I do have it in digital form. These two books I have in digital form and 
a, a hard copy as well. So these are just things that I created to help really start the conversation with the kids. I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I told you I have this big group on Facebook. I share lots of free information in there, tons and tons. But if you want to say, hey, Shantae, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't even tell you last time I pulled my credit report. All I know is my credit score is probably somewhere in the four or 500s. And I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to manage my money better, get a house, whatever the case is. That's where you sign up with me and we sit and do a 90 minute session. I look at all your reports and I go, listen, this is what you need to do. Da, 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 da. Okay. That is what I do as well for people who want direct assistance with me. If you want to contact me directly, oh my Lord, I have the website as my email address. Please forgive me, but my email address is right there. If you just take off Shantae and the at sign. <laughs> so financialcommonsense.org is my website. My email is Shantae at financialcommonsense.org. If you go to .com, you'll still get there too. It'll just uh, transfer over. Facebook, my group is called Financial Common Sense. The public page is Financial Common Sense Inc. And then Instagram is at Financial Common Sense and at I am Shantae Nicole. The group, if, is, if you're looking for more of a community, if you're like, hey, I just want to get some, you know, some insight or some information every now and then, then you can just check the page and see what's been posted. But if you really want that community, you want to share, ask questions, answer questions, um, then that is when you want to become a family member of FCC. So that's all, folks. I am so happy that you guys are here. Thank you for being patient. Thank you for asking questions and telling me what you guys have already been implementing. It's so good to know. Um, we have a couple um, things. Um, should we have them break up the check donation savings? Yeah, honey, this is your game of Monopoly. I love that, though. Not just bills, right? Are you donating? Is that important to your family? Some families, that's not a big deal. You know, if it's a big deal to you guys, then yes, 50 cents, 25 cents of your money, start giving back to the needy, you know, definitely savings. Savings is important because we talk to them. I know you want this toy, but it's going to probably take you a few months to save. But if you blow your money every time you get it, you're never going to get this toy because I'm not going to buy it for you. Um, an emergency fund. I don't know about emergency fund now. I don't think their lives are... <laughs> In any type of you know situations where they would be like, oh, my, my tire blew <laughs> and I, I'm not getting paid till next week. So I don't know how much of an emergency they would be in. But even if you want to make up emergencies for them, just to kind of, again, set that tone at an early age, that would be great too. A tip someone's giving us is don't wait until the holiday to shop. Pick up items and sales. And honey, yes, and indeed. I could even finish the sentence throughout the year and put it away for Christmas. Shop now. Shop now. Like y'all wait until like, the week before Christmas, y'all hustling and bustling all through the stores. Listen, yes, they're going to be Christmas sales and Black Friday sales, but they're sales all week long. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Tracy. Yes, listen, guys, this is your game of life. Play it the way you want to play it. These are your rules, and these are your children, and these are your funds. I can't tell you where to allocate them, but I can suggest what you do. You can do all of them, like Miss Lady said up top, or you can just do some. You can say, we're going to do one this one one each quarter. You know, I'm going to make them pay bills for a quarter. Then I'm going to give them a little break. Then I'm going to, you know, let them use their debit card. And then I'm going to, you know, make them, you know, wh whatever you want to do. I just throw out suggestions. You may look at all those four and say, you know what? I like these. And I came up with my own suggestion. Hey, send me, send me an email. Hey, Shante, I came up with something else clever. Because I would like to add that to my, you know, my workshop. <laughs> and then let them, hey, I got this from another person who was on a pre previous workshop and say, she gave me a great idea to start doing this. I, I, I give credit where it's due. So I'm just, again, grateful that you guys we're here. Um, if you want to start learning more about credit, savings, debt management, join my group. I do workshops all the time. I have a credit credit repair academy. I do one-on-one -on -one, and I also um, have six credit repair books that I wrote last year too to help you build, repair, and maintain good credit. So um, yeah, Before, before is, you leave, before mm -hmm. you leave. So I had somebody that asked how to get your books and that was at that website. So can you just say that one more time? I'm so sorry. Um, financialcommonsense.org. I'm sorry it says my email address there, but if you go to financialcommonsense.org, you will see the Kids Making Sense um, books and card. I don't think I put the cards on there, but I'll put them on there tonight because they were sold out. And then also um, you will see the six credit repair books. Um, but what I want to do for you guys is something amazing. And thank you. And I do it at the end because I like to let people stick around. <laughs> um, so please email me tonight or tomorrow. Um, hey, I attended the workshop or, or webinar and um, about, you know, the budgeting for the kids or credit or finances. And I'm just um, reaching out for my gift because I'm going to give you guys an option to choose one of the six books that I have for free. Oh, that is, that's incredible. That's <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, I see. A, I see a few people hopped off early, too. So 
Let me see. Yeah, you said, I'm not going to do that. Anybody who was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, I don't know if you can keep track or have a list of like a rolling list of who was able to log in. Yeah, we'll figure that out. You're welcome. Out. Very welcome. So, hey, I, I, this question that you answered, it was a, it was a great question, but I did want to see if you can highlight what about sinking funds. I think sinking funds are very important. So when it comes to, so it really depends on the age, right? And I know we, I keep saying, you know, talk about, um, Grat delay gratification and emergencies and stuff. So it really depends on the age of the child, right? Um, if I'm six, how much planning am I doing for any money I need to allocate anyway, right? <laughs> so, you know, teenagers, yeah. Hey, guess what? You said that you and your um, football guys were going to try to plan a, a trip, not part of the senior trip, but a, a trip for, you know, when you guys graduate. Okay, well, guess what? When is that date? And what date is the trip you're trying to go on? Okay, uh, a couple of weeks after school gets out? Well, it's January now. The trip costs this much. Let's figure out how much you need to say weekly or biweekly or monthly until you get to that final point, that, that point. There's a, some future thing that you're saving for and or particular need that you want. And so let's figure out, let's come up with that plan. So yes, it really depends on the age. I wouldn't really start talking about emergency funds or sinking funds for a six or seven year old. What, what are they really doing that they need to be planning for the future? But you know, as they age and they start doing things and hanging out and planning things on their own or um, you know, being a little bit more responsible, then I think that that's when you would start. So again, again, it depends on the, how, the, the dynamic of your household, what you guys normally do. Um, the age of your child, your expenses, um, how much you can allocate towards them. But yeah, no, sinking funds, that conversation should not not be had, but it really depends on the age of the child. Got it. Well, I, I, you've given some really, really powerful information. And I think one of the best things you said tonight, you know, definitely revolves around delayed gratification. And, mm. you know, I, I think if you are spending more time and and money on experiences rather than things. I think that's also <laughs> that's also important as well, you know. And I know, you know, we we don't like to seem like the mean Grinches and the witches, but we gotta teach our kids like, sorry, mommy, we're not we're not gonna do Christmas this year. Like, listen, Christmas coming next year. And by the, listen, if we save and mommy can pay all these bills off and stuff like that, we will have an amazing Christmas next year. You know, it'll be bigger than anything we've ever had, and that'll give them something excited to look forward to. But we have to learn how to really tell our kids, no, it's okay. Absolutely. Especially if it's for a greater good. I agree. Not a question, but I taught my children to contribute monetarily to ties, offerings, donations, hey, et cetera. Say it again. If that's yeah. your thing, if that's what you implement in your household, that's what you do. Hey, you got $20 this month. What's your 10%? <laughs> Figure that out. <laughs> Put it in the envelope. When we go to church on Sunday or we watch church online, when we pull up the app and we donate from your debit card, might I add, to the tithes and offering. So really, really make them feel like they're grown up, that they desire to be so bad and they're going to get a rude awakening once they become adults. I mean, that's okay. <laughs> they need so, it. Well, great information. We really have appreciated your, you know, your professionalism and your information. And I, I think that it's, it's been great. It's been amazing. And hopefully you'll have everybody reach out to you and, and get those free books and yes, ask any please. questions. Yeah. Yep. So thank you guys so much. And um, I hope to connect with you guys soon. Absolutely. And we'll be in touch. And okay. hey, hey, attendee, please make sure you, you send that email. Send that email to the email address she gave to get that book. Can you just say it one more time? <laughs> yes, it is Shantae, S-H-A-N-T-E at Financial Common Sense, C-E-N-T-S dot org. Gotcha. And we're also going to be posting this video on the website as well. Okay. If anybody missed anything. So, well, hey, okay. thank you. And thank you everybody who tuned in. That's another episode. And please stay tuned on the website to, to look for our next episode of Money Talks here in Crowley ISD. Thank you all very much. Y'all have thank a great you. night. All Good right. night.